This method will definitely make you fluent in English in Japan, and it's in the shortest amount of time. Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about how to learn to speak English all by myself. I started learning English conversations in my second year of university, and back then, my English was like this. So air conditioner is something that makes the temperature of that room getting more comfortable, getting more comfortable. So it's really good. Yes. This was the best I could do back then. But in high school, it was way worse. I actually got an Akaten. But everything changed when I traveled to Australia. While traveling, I got to know the locals and try to have conversations in English. Of course, my English had a lot of grammar mistakes, pronunciation mistakes, but they were really kind to listen to it. And I was like, this is English. Until then, English had been just nothing short of a test that gives me scores like 60 or 80, but it was totally different. English was more like entertainment to enjoy conversations with people. And at that moment, I thought to myself, I'll definitely try to be able to speak English. From that moment, my journey has started. First, I spent a lot of time thinking about why I can't speak English in the first place and how I'll be able to speak English. And after thinking about it a lot, I found a new method that is completely different from the previous one. Today in this video, I'm going to share this with you. This method I thought will definitely make you fluent in English in Japan, and it's in the shortest amount of time. And also, I'll continue to share more and more strategies to improve English in Japan. So, if you have even the slightest interest, please subscribe to my channel. Basically, there are only three things that you need to be able to speak English. Vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation. Based on my experience, if you practice these three things to a certain level, you can definitely speak English. So now I'll introduce the most effective study method that I have personally practiced for each. Out of the three, vocabulary is the most important. Now I can say that the reason why I couldn't speak English was because I used the wrong vocabulary learning method. When I was younger, I used this. Just a metango. Just done. And I was like, result, kick up, experience, kick in, society, shakai. Like this, I only memorize the meaning of the words. And also I just try to go through just um, twice or three times without prioritizing the words at all. Or try to memorize the words by writing them down a lot and necessarily. So my previous vocabulary learning method focused on just memorizing the words. However, to be able to speak English, you need a vocabulary learning method to be able to speak English. More specifically, you need to increase the words that not only you can understand but also you can speak. So I primarily did two things. The first thing is to reduce system. I get it another shot by using the new method. There were three new points I focused on. First, memorize the sounds. Second, memorize the images. And third, memorize how to use the words. First, let's focus on the sounds. Well, the sounds is really important. If you don't understand the sounds, you won't be able to pronounce correctly. And also, you won't understand what you hear. But back in high school, I was like, I don't have time for sounds. And I used to skip them. So I started listening to the audio data of Shiston on my phone. And I corrected the wrong sounds that were in my head. For example, check the word beverage. I used to remember it as Bibarichi, but I corrected it to the correct pronunciation, beverage, uh, by writing like this. Second, memorized images. This really helped me develop an English brain. Basically, an English brain refers to the brain that can think in English without relying on Japanese, right? So, the memorizing images was perfect for this. For example, there is a word in Shiston, dim. It means usugurai in Japanese, but it's kind of hard to imagine it just in Japanese, right? That's where memorizing images comes in. When you search dim on Google Images, you instantly get images like this. Isn't this image easy to understand? So this allows me to understand that dim is this usugurasa, and this is exactly dim. I think it's way easier to remember and more memorable than just memorizing the Japanese meaning. Third, memorizing how to use the word. I think it's crucial for becoming able to speak English. People who can't speak English really haven't done this, but the method is really simple. Just look at example sentences for the word and remember how it is used in different contexts or how it is used with other words. For example, let's take this word, concentrate. It means shujutsu. Looking at example sentences for this word, we can see concentrate on my work, concentrate on my task, concentrate on studying. From this, I can understand that concentrate is used with the word on as concentrate on, or domeshi can be put after concentrate on. I remembered this kind of usage for each word. If you do this, when you want to say, for example, um, 
again you should just do concentrate on driving comes to you naturally and easily the second thing i did was my vocabulary note back honestly without this i wouldn't have been able to speak english by the way it's not just an ordinary my vocabulary note back it's my vocabulary note back which enables me to speak english in the shortest amount of time i created it using a free app called notion here's a look inside like this i manage words in a special way i thoroughly explained the best vocabulary learning method in the previous video and i have included a lot of the essence of this video since it's kind of boring to explain this in words so i'll show you how i actually use my vocabulary notebook for example, let's take the word rip off. This is a word I couldn't say before when I was doing Torigoto practice. And now I'm gonna bring this word to a level where I can speak it by using my vocabulary notebook effectively and efficiently. First, click on this button new to add the word rip off. Then my preset template automatically appears like this. Next, I'll ask ChatGPT to answer a preset template. And then I put the information I gathered into this page. By the way, I usually hide the Japanese part so that I don't have to look at it. Okay, the contest is completed for now. And now now here's the main part. You will see two categories, Hinshutsudo and Shutokudo. These two are exactly the best vocabulary learning method that I explained in this video as Nishikanki. For Hinshutsudo, I categorize words into three levels like Mekara Uroko, Shoutsukairu, Tsukairu. I'll explain this later in detail, but this word, rip off, is a not only high frequency word, but also eye opening word that you rarely encounter in Japan. So I set this word to mekaru roko, that is the highest level of hinsudo. For shutokudo, I categorize words into four levels like input to chu, input to zumi, shinpatsu kriya, hanaseru. I'll explain this later in detail as well, but this word is automatically set as input to chu by default. That's because it's totally new to me and I haven't learned it at all yet. Since I set the word rip off, it has mekaru for Hinsudo and input to for Shutokudo. When I open this, it appears here at the top. Okay, now is the big climax. Well, currently, this word, rip off, it's set as input to So I'll practice this word during my free time and try to move it to the rightmost section called Hanaseru. That's exactly the goal here. More specifically, when I can remember the word, even if it takes some time, I move it to input to zumi. Next, when I can remember this word instantly, I move it to shinpas kuriya. And then, as the last step, when I can actually use this word in the conversations or Historigoto, I move it to Hanaseru. Of course, Shinpas Kriya is higher level than Input Tozumi, and Input Tozumi is higher level than Input Tochu. So I can understand that the more left you go, the more time you should take. So basically, I can always be aware of where I should spend the most time. Also, for Hinsudo, I spend the most time on words in Mekara Roko which is the most important category. Then I spend the second most time on the words in Chotsukairu. And if I have extra time, I work on the words Tsukairu. This way will automatically make it efficient. This is how I've been using my vocabulary notebook since my second year of university. And it's the reason for my current English proficiency, I believe. If anyone is interested in my vocabulary notebook, I'm thinking of creating more detailed videos and distributing the templates for free. I'd love to hear any comments below. Next is grammar. Grammar also became much easier for me after changing my study method. I switched from oboeiru benkyouho to tsukaiu benkyouho. Before, I used to memorize grammar from textbooks, and if I could answer test questions, that was okay. But this approach wouldn't allow me to use grammar in real conversations. Say it's like reading a book about how to play soccer, but not being able to play soccer because um, you've just only read the book. The same goes for English. That's why I completely switched to tsukaiu benkyouho, and I saw immediate results after switching this method. This is pretty simple as well. I have done only two things. The first thing is to redo Vintage, that is grammar book. I used this book when I was a high school student. I gave it another shot using the new method. There were only two new points I focused on, creating the sentences quickly and increasing the level gradually. Let's take an example of this grammar in the vintage. A as Genkyo as B. This means A or B to Using this grammar, I practiced creating sentences like This shirt is as comfortable as pajamas. This book is as interesting as that movie. She's as smart as her sister. Since the speed is really important in real conversations, I practiced creating these kind of sentences really quickly. And also I gradually increased the complexity of the sentences I created. For example, at first I could only say this shirt is as comfortable as pajamas. But after learning about the different grammar, say Kanki Daimisho later, I can create a longer sentences like this shirt is as comfortable as pajamas that I got yesterday. And this way I gradually elevated the level of the sentences I created. The second thing I did was learning through practice. This means I learned grammar by looking up grammar that I couldn't use uh, during the conversation or historigoto. For example, if I cannot say um, I'll Google something like 
space ego. But nowadays, I think it's quicker and more reliable to ask ChatGPT for help. The answer is like this. Based on this, I can understand that I should use this grammar just because SV doesn't mean SV in this context. So now I can make the sentences by using this. Just because you have a high TOEIC score doesn't mean you can speak English. In this way, I learned grammar little by little through the practice to create the sentences by myself. I feel like I was able to acquire the grammar that I learned through practice way faster than uh, the grammar that I learned from textbooks, like vintage. The last thing is pronunciation. Well, it might be just me, but I used to think that it would be almost impossible to have good pronunciation unless you had been to a foreign country when you were young. But let me tell you, it's not true. You can definitely have the good pronunciation if you do the right approach. The method that I used was shadowing and analysis. Although there are lots of pronunciation books available at the bookstores, I used only YouTube as my learning resource. So fortunately, I didn't spend any money on pronunciation. It's also really simple, only three steps. Step one, pick a YouTube video that you like. For example, in my case, I often chose videos from a channel called GQ. Step two, practice shadowing as many times as possible. Ultimately, having good pronunciation means being able to sounds like a native speaker. Therefore, shadowing is an effective training method as it helps you match the sounds of native speakers. However, you may find it pretty difficult when you actually start doing it. In my case, my tongue wouldn't cooperate and I wanted to give up after three seconds. But if you patiently continue shadowing the same video over and over, your pronunciation gradually will get better. It's just my case, but I probably did at least 100 times for each video. However, even after many times, there will be some sounds that you can't pronounce well. You may wonder like, how do you make this sound? That's when step 3 analysis comes into play. I used a Chrome extension called Video Speed Controller to slow down a YouTube videos to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 times the normal speed. Slowing down a video makes it easier to understand how those sounds are pronounced. By diligently doing these three steps, I gradually improved my pronunciation. But for me, it doesn't feel like I studied hard. It's more like I did a little at a time during breaks such as walking from the station to your home. By the way, people often ask me, do I need to that explain Hatsune Kigo? I personally think it's unnecessary because it's kind of boring. If I use them, I will probably give up after 3 seconds. Instead, I watch pronunciation explanation videos on YouTube. For example, the channel called Iophonics that explains English pronunciation in Japanese. I use lectures like that to understand unfamiliar sounds like dark L or flap T. On the side note, I believe that the pronunciation improves faster than most people think. The reason is that the pronunciation is easy to apply to the other words. For example, the flap T sound. It's a T sound that sounds like D sound, like the T in the security. Once you Master the sound, you can also pronounce the other words like pretty, possibility, probability, availability, flexibility, totally. Like this, learning one sound helps you pronounce the other words as well. So it's faster than most people think. And finally, let me say one thing. I think currently in Japan, the number of people who can speak English is very low. That's because we learn English at school, but not how to speak English. And as a result, that many people believe that studying abroad is necessary to be able to speak English. That's why I made this video to show you that we can definitely speak English on our own without studying abroad if you do the right approach. I'll continue to share more and more tips later, so if you'd like to get it, please subscribe to my channel. See you later.